Hello everyone, welcome to What The Math, this is Anton, and today we're taking a trip to Orion's Nebula. This is a diffuse nebula located somewhere in the Milky Way, specifically right ahead of us. And it's a nebula that's about 1300 light years away from us, so it's going to take us quite a long trip to get there. Now this is actually one of the brightest nebulas in the night sky and you can usually even see it with a naked eye if you are in a dark enough area. However, the red cloud that you see ahead of you is not the Orion's Nebula. This is actually called Orion Molecular Cloud Complex, which the Orion Nebula is part of. There's actually quite a few nebulas inside of this complex. And essentially what's happening here is that inside of this complex, a lot of new planets are being born. Now we actually have a word for this, it's called a stellar nursery. So we're actually headed toward the biggest area of star formation close to Earth, where a lot of new planets and a lot of new stars are being formed right now. And the biggest of these complexes is the Orion's Nebula. It's the brightest and it has the most amount of stars per volume. Now as we're flying through the nebula, you may realize it's not as big as you thought, and this is actually only about 24 light years across. Now the interesting thing is that, what most people don't realize is that you can't actually go inside a nebula because it is very 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 hot here. The temperature in this region is anywhere from 10,000 degrees to up to 10 million degrees, which means that any kind of a spaceship would most likely just melt. And all of this heat and all of this color is produced by a very interesting effect called photoionizing light, which is actually the reason for these colorful glows that you see in this nebula, and is produced by the stars that are created in the middle, in the center, and all of these stars, as they essentially emit a lot of light and a lot of uh, ultraviolet radiation, they kind of create this ionization glow that can be different types of colors. And depending on the material that the light hits, uh, you'll get different types of color. And of of course, most of the material here is just hydrogen, but it's ionized hydrogen, so it produces a variety of different colors. And inside this little nebula, there's actually something like 3,000 different stars that we've already discovered, meaning that there's actually possibly even more that we haven't found yet, and many of these have already started forming planetesimals and possibly even planets. Now we're going to actually approach one of these most famous uh, star constellations, and this one is called Trapezium. Now these are actually eight very very bright stars, and are actually one of the main reasons why this nebula is so bright. So Trapezium obviously is named because if you look from a certain angle, the stars actually formed a trapezoid, which is a geometric shape. And originally these were discovered by Galileo in um, 17th century, but he only found three of these. It took quite a few years to actually discover all eight of them, and all eight of these stars have a uh, name of Theta, Orionis, A, B, C, D, and so on. Now in Space Engine, uh, these stars actually do have planets around them, which is technically not very very realistic, but since it's procedurally generated, I've decided to actually try to land on one of these planets just to see what it looks like and just to see the beauty of living on this planet inside a nebula. And unlike the rest of the nebula, uh, inside of the solar system, uh, the actual temperature might not be as high as 10,000 degrees because uh, the actual star pushes away many of these different particles out of the solar system and creates a kind of a empty space around it. So it's actually not as dangerous to try to approach these particular planets, but getting there and getting through the nebula might be a little bit difficult. And all of these eight stars are only about 1.5 light years away from each other, with the closest being something like 10% of a light year, which means that you can travel between them relatively easy if you have a fast enough spaceship. And some of the planets I found in this particular system are actually absolutely gorgeous. Some of them have rings, some of them have many different moons orbiting in a very interesting way, and a lot of them actually have oceans. Now whether this is real or not, we don't really know, but chances are it's not actually real because a lot of these stars are only about 300,000 or not even a million years old yet, meaning that the planets are probably still forming and there's probably still a planetary disk around these stars. 
and the largest and brightest of these stars will actually have a very short lifespan and will eventually become a supernova, introducing even more different materials into this cloud known as Orion Nebula. And following the supernova, there's actually going to be quite a lot of new materials introduced, which will probably change the color of the nebula as well. Now, once all of these stars are formed, they are usually actually kicked out of the nebula at speeds of up to 100 kilometers per second. And the reason we think this happens is because there's possibly an intermediate sized black hole somewhere inside Orion's nebula. And it's about 100 masses of sun and it explains why some of these stars move really, really fast around a certain spot in the nebula. And so once the stars are formed, and once they start acquiring planets, they're basically just kicked out of the nebula and go on their merry way, possibly even creating Earth-like planets as they go, and eventually possibly even having some sort of life on them. And before we finish this video, let's actually fly away from this beautiful planet right here, and we're going to escape the nebula relatively slow, increasing our speed as we go. Now, the interesting thing is that this nebula is not going to last forever. As a matter of fact, scientists estimate that it probably only has about 100,000 years left, after which time it will just kind of disappear, most of the dust will be ejected, and the remains will form uh, an open cluster of really, really bright young stars surrounded by various cloudy remains of what used to be the nebula or, I guess, the cloud. And even these clouds will disappear with time, and then there will be nothing left except for, of course, the stars that were created in this nebula. So studying this nebula allows us to understand how stellar generation works, and how stars and planets are born in our universe. And anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you will share this and like this, and possibly even send this to your friends to watch it as well. If you've enjoyed watching this and you're still not subscribed, don't forget to press the subscribe button underneath, and also consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me create better quality videos in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, bye bye.